Have you ever seen these things before? Perhaps you have, at a local pet store, an expo, or even from a friend who has one. This is the crested gecko, one of the most popular pet reptiles in the world, with good reason. Crested geckos are small, scaly companions that live at room temperature, need very little space, and have a diet as easy to prepare as a smoothie. If you live in an apartment, house, or mobile home, chances are you have room for a crestie. In addition, crested geckos come in a variety of fashionable colors, patterns, and structures to suit any owner's personal preferences. But before we dive into their care and housing requirements, let's learn a little bit about their history. Crested geckos hail from New Caledonia, a series of islands off the coast of Australia that consist of the island of Grand Terre and the island of Pines. Crested geckos live in the temperate rainforests of these islands, where the temperature is mild and ranges between 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Humidity can vary between 60 to 90 percent. These series of islands are also home to other gecko species, such as gargoyle geckos, lichianus geckos, and chihuahuas, which can also be found in the pet trade. Crested geckos were first discovered in the year of 1866, but after many following expeditions, they were thought to be extinct. After a tropical storm in 1994, they were rediscovered as many began to make their appearances after the rise in humidity. A select few specimens were collected and eventually became a part of the captive-bred reptile pet trade in order to preserve and protect the species from extinction in the wild. In the wild, crested geckos are nocturnal and subsist on a diet of ripe fruit and a variety of small insects. Larger geckos on the island are known predators of the crested gecko and will often make a quick meal out of them. As a defense mechanism, a crested gecko will detach its tail from its body as a distraction to help aid in its escape. This tail will unfortunately never grow back, and for the remainder of its life, the crested gecko will remain tailless. Many captive bred specimens still have their tails intact due to lack of major threats found in captivity. However, loud noises, stress, and physical pressure can still cause your crested gecko to drop its tail in captivity. So, you've decided that maybe a crested gecko might be the right pet for you. Let's go over some tips on how to select a healthy gecko. The best places to buy a crested gecko would be from a breeder that specializes in breeding crested geckos. Breeders are often knowledgeable about the specific care requirements of the species that they work with and are often willing to provide you with all the help and information you need to become a successful crested gecko owner. To find some breeders, you can simply search the internet for crested geckos for sale, and a variety of breeders will show up. Some of the most reputable and longtime breeders in the hobby include Pangea, Tiki's geckos, AC reptiles, Chasing Cresties, and Fringe Morphs, just to name a few. You can also find many smaller and local breeders on MorphMarket.com, where many breeders post ads for their geckos. This is a good way to introduce yourself to many individual breeders and find a gecko that suits your fancy. Seasonal events like reptile expos are also a great way to meet a variety of crested geckos and their breeders. Most vendors will also let you handle the gecko that you are interested in purchasing so you can select the temperament that matches your preference. You may also find a crested gecko located at a chain or local pet store near you. Beware, the staff and personnel might not be knowledgeable enough to provide lifelong assistance for your pet or know the nuances of their care. They also might not be able to provide you with a detailed history of the animal, its pattern type, or perhaps what food it fancies. But if the animal looks well taken care of, there is no harm in purchasing it, as long as you have done proper research on its care and husbandry. Before purchasing, be sure to handle and examine the gecko if you can. Crested geckos can live in upwards of 20 to 30 years if cared for properly, so it is important to pick a healthy individual that you can maintain throughout its lifetime. Make sure that there is no discharge coming from the nose or eyes. The feces in its cage should be solid with no watery or goopy consistencies. The gecko's eyes should look bright and not sunken in. Sunken in eyes are an indication of dehydration. The crested gecko should not be moving lethargically. Sometimes, this is harder to tell with calmer geckos, but a calm gecko will actively move its head in order to observe its surroundings. They would move confidently and deliberately in your hands, rather than sluggishly or hesitantly. 
Crested geckos often flick their tongue out to clean their eyeballs and nose as they have no eyelids. The tongue should be a reddish pink in color and should adhere well to the gecko's lids and nose when cleaning. If the tongue is pale, slow moving, and has trouble sticking to surfaces, this is a sign of dehydration and poor health. The price of a gecko is generally very affordable, but may vary depending on what sex, age, or colors and patterns they have. You can find a crested gecko as cheap as $30 to an upwards of $3,000 depending on how you want your pet to look like. If you go to a breeder, chances are they are likely to have crested geckos at all sorts of life stages to choose from. If this is going to be your first gecko, it is best to purchase an older juvenile or adult rather than a hatchling or baby. Babies and hatchlings range from 5 to 10 grams, while juveniles range from 11 to 30 grams. An adult gecko will finish growing at around 4 to 6 inches in length, not including the tail, and will often have a weight between 40 and 60 grams. Adults and juveniles are often calmer than babies and most likely have been handled more in life. Prices for adults can be more expensive, around $80 to $100 for a plainly patterned one. But if you are nervous about keeping a more jumpy or delicate baby, an older gecko might be a more suitable fit, especially if you are looking to handle your gecko on a frequent basis without stressing it. The care for an adult or juvenile is the same as a care for a baby, with the only difference being cage requirements and the amount of food offered to your gecko. Speaking of food, let's go over the diet of a crested gecko. The best food to feed your gecko are specially formulated powdered fruit diets. These are complete diets that need no extra modifications or additional supplementation. Buy these foods from trusted brands like Rapashi and Pangea. To prepare the diet, take a small spoonful of the diet from the bag and place it in a separate cup. Add some water and mix thoroughly. Use a ratio of two parts water to one part powder. By the time you're done, the food should have mixed into a smoothie-like consistency. Here are some examples of different sized bowls that you can use for different sized crested geckos. Many people use small water bottle caps. Pour the food into the bowl. Alternatively, you could mix the food and water together in the bottle cap, but I'd like to do it separately just to prevent spills. Feeding insects to crested geckos are optional, but if you would like to, provide them with calcium dust dusted crickets or dubia roaches in order to help them grow faster or maintain their weight. Feed a few insects once a week at most, and be sure to dust the insects with calcium and D3 supplement powder before feeding. Good insects to feed include crickets, dubia roaches, hornworms, and silkworms. Do not feed mealworms, superworms, or phoenix worms, as crested geckos are unable to digest their thick exoskeletons. Next, let's go over some housing requirements for different sized geckos. There are three different types of housing that you can provide for your gecko. One being artificial, second being naturalistic, and third being bioactive. For a simplistic or artificial cage, you can simply use a plastic sterilite container. Place some paper towel on the bottom as substrate. Next, you can add various decorations. This will allow your gecko to have multiple surfaces to climb on. They don't necessarily need a cave, but they may prefer hiding in various fake plants and perching on top of branches. Make sure to wash any decorations with soap and water after you purchase them. Next, add the food to the cage. You can also purchase specific food ledges as well. Drill some holes into the plastic lid for ventilation. In addition, you could also drill a giant square and tape some screen on it. That cage, as well as this one, works perfectly for a juvenile gecko, around the size of this one, or between 5 and 20 grams. The purpose of simplistic cages like this is to keep the environment as clean and sterile as possible. A cage like this needs routine cleaning every one to two weeks. Be sure to mist the cage at least once a day in order to keep humidity up and help provide the gecko with water to drink from the sides of the tank. If you decide to get a baby or hatchling crested gecko, you will need a smaller enclosure size, like this one. For babies, it is especially important to use paper towel substrate, as loose substrates such as dirt and soil can impact the gecko if it ingests it accidentally. Fill the area of the cage with a small fake plant and some twigs if preferred. You can also provide an optional water bowl in the cage. 
some crusties will still prefer to drink from the sides of the enclosure. This hatchling crested gecko weighs about 3 grams and is about 3 months old. It is the perfect size for an enclosure like this. With babies and young crested geckos, it is more important to provide a clean and safe enclosure. This is the setup for a simplistic enclosure for an adult crested gecko. More plants could be added to this enclosure, but be careful of overcrowding. It also includes a screen ventilated lid. This enclosure is about 2 feet long and 1.5 and foot tall. When crested geckos reach adulthood, it is very easy to tell their sex. Male crested geckos will have a definitive bulge at the base of their tail. This bulge includes the hemipenes of a crested gecko. While crested geckos seldom bite, be careful of pressing your finger too incessantly on the mouth of a male gecko. It may elicit a breeding response from him. This is an adult female crested gecko and her enclosure. It's slightly bare and could use a few more plants. This female gecko is proven, which means she has bred before and laid a clutch of eggs. Female crested geckos have no bulge at the base of the tail and are flat. Some vendors put a higher price on proven females or proven breeding pairs or males. A step up from a simplistic enclosure is a naturalistic enclosure, which you can purchase when your gecko is a little bit older. Juveniles and adults can be housed in this type of enclosure. To make this enclosure, you will need a bag of loose substrate such as soil or natural looking bark a few branches, some fake plants, and an optional feeding ledge or some hides. Never purchase soil from a gardening store, as these may contain harmful fertilizers and chemicals that could be detrimental to your gecko's health. You can purchase a screen, glass, or acrylic enclosure, such as this one. For larger juveniles, you can purchase a 12 by 12 by 18 enclosure, or an 18 by 18 by 36 for adults. You could also make the enclosure a little bit bigger for adults. Crested geckos are arboreal, and they prefer an enclosure that is taller rather than longer. Decorate and arrange the branches to your liking. Make sure that the gecko has a variety of surfaces to climb on. Also note that in simplistic cages, it is okay to put the food bowl at the bottom of the tank. However, for naturalistic enclosures, it's best to purchase a feeding ledge in order for the gecko to minimize contact with the substrate. This gecko would be perfect for a gecko smaller than this. Next, let's move on to how to make a bioactive enclosure, such as this. For this project, I used a plastic bin instead of a glass enclosure, but this display would obviously look very good behind a glass or acrylic setup. Bioactive enclosures often feature a cleaning crew, live plants, and various driftwood branches. They require very minimal cleaning and are very impressive to look at. The first step to creating a bioactive enclosure is to add a false bottom or drainage layer. I used hydroton clay balls for this enclosure, but you can also use aquarium pebbles. This layer should be about one inch deep. This is so that extra water can drain into the bottom of the tank and prevent mold buildup. Separate this layer from the others by adding a screen mesh cover, cut to size, to the bottom of the tank. This is so that the soil layer does not clog or interfere with the drainage layer. Many reptile stores sell reptile safe soil mixtures that you can add to the soil layer. The ABG mix is one of the best ones to get. You can also add a charcoal layer between the soil and drainage layer in order to house your cleanup crew, which consists of isopods and springtails. Add any plants or heavy decorations to the soil. Then add some driftwood or branches. Make sure to wash the plants or driftwood as thoroughly as you can. Remove the soil that the plant came from as best as you can to prevent the transfer of mites or unwanted pesticides. Finally, add a layer of sphagnum moss and leaf litter to the top of the soil in order to separate your crested gecko from the cleanup crew burrowing in the substrate. Springtails and isopods in the cleanup crew help clean up the waste from your crested gecko and consume most molds in the tank. Bioactive displays should only be used for older juvenile geckos or adult geckos that don't need a tremendous amount of monitoring. So, you've got your newly purchased crested gecko in its enclosure. Now how do you handle or interact with it? The first thing to remember is that crested geckos are quite skilled jumpers and not to be scared of that when handling them. 
hand walk them by placing one hand in front of the other slowly and deliberately. Crested geckos will always move towards the point of higher elevation. Make sure the hand or surface that you want your crested gecko to move onto is higher than the one that it is currently on. You can also coax your gecko to move by stroking its back or limbs. Be prepared for jerky or jumpy responses. Use the same principles for handling adults towards juveniles and babies. Be mindful that juveniles and hatchling crested geckos are a lot more jumpy than adults and are more clumsy. So, you've spent many months or years enjoying your crested gecko. What's the next step? Is it breeding? Many hobbyists try to dabble into breeding crested geckos one way or another. Here's some practical considerations to think about before deciding to breed your personal crested gecko. Crested geckos can lay up to 12 eggs per season over a sequence of six months. That's one clutch that contains one to two eggs, which each female will lay every month. Do you have the space to house each individual baby crested gecko you hatch? Do you have the funds necessary to provide food, substrate, and decorations for the animal until it is sold? What market are you looking to target when selling your babies? Speaking of the market, let's delve a little deeper into the crested gecko pet trade. Crested geckos are very easy to breed and are a common beginner reptile in the hobby. As such, the market is often saturated with an abundance of crested geckos. While it is completely okay to just breed two animals that you find to be beautiful, it is important to know what types of geckos are most desired by the market in order to ensure that your geckos find good homes swiftly. These visuals display a variety of geckos with basic pattern markings. These geckos include patternless, buckskin, tiger, bicolor, or brindle geckos. These patterns are one of the first morphs discovered in crested geckos when they were imported. As a result, these geckos are relatively inexpensive and are not extremely desired by the market. The exception extends, though, to red patternless or yellow patternless geckos, which still hold quite a bit of value in the pet trade. Flames are the start of a marking that comes from the gecko's belly up to their back. While flames are not really desirable, harlequins and extreme harlequins are. They contain a higher amount of pattern on the laterals. As seen previously, dalmatians and super dalmatians are extremely desirable by the market, but can devalue a highly patterned animal, such as on an extreme harlequin or a tricolor crested gecko. If you breed two flames together, you can get a harlequin, just as if you breed two harlequins together, you can get an extreme harlequin. If you breed two extremes together, then you have a high probability of producing all extremes in a clutch. There is an argument around the hobby that crested geckos are polygenic, and breeding them is like throwing your hand in a bag of randomly assorted marbles. However, this is false. Crested geckos are actually polymorphic and do follow simple Mendelian genetics. Traits that we define as extreme harlequin, flames, harlequin, or brindle and tiger are just forms of specifically bred traits rather than the result of genetic mutations. There are a few mutations regarding the crested gecko's color and traits. The Dalmatian gene is dominant which means by breeding a Dalmatian to a normal, all babies will be Dal Dalmatian and will carry the gene to their offspring if they're bred. Pinstriping on a gecko is also an independent trait that is structural and raises the spinal scales on a crested gecko. There are full pinstripes, reverse pinstripes, and partial pinstripes. Full pinstripes are always desirable and will increase the value of a gecko. Two partial pinstripes can breed to create some pinstripes. A tricolor gecko is a gecko that contains colorings of orange, yellow, and white, and brown or black base markings. These geckos are extremely desirable. Any other trait that you add on will increase the value of this gecko. Well, except maybe Dalmatian spots. Quad stripes are when a gecko has both pinstripes and straight lateral lines running down the sides. The phantom gene is a gene that mutes out the color or base pattern on a crested gecko while leaving the top pattern. 
Phantom pinstripes or quad stripes are uncommon, but are not extremely desirable, but yet are not extremely inexpensive either. They're an example of an in-between marking. Structural traits like crowned crested geckos often occur when two parents have a high amount of crests that extends well past their head. Increasing the incubation time or incubating at cooler temperatures results in a higher probability of you getting crown crested geckos. Crown crested geckos are extremely desirable, and while they may not result in a direct upcharge to the gecko, they may help convince a buyer to make a decision. Probably the ultimate and most desirable gecko on the market right now is the lily white crested gecko. This is also considered in the hobby to be an incomplete dominant trait, but it can also be viewed as a lethal white gene, as breeding two lily whites together can result in half of the offspring being a non-viable leucistic if they received both dominant alleles. As such, you could also consider to be a dominant trait in which heterozygous individuals are viable. The last known mutation is the azanthic, the only known recessive mutation to occur in crested geckos. While lily whites are typically priced between $1,000 to $3,000, azanthics start around $2,000 to $3,000 and can go an upwards of $5,000 to $6,000. To this day, some breeders have hatched out lily white azanthic geckos. Now that you have a better grasp on the crested gecko market and what patterns or morphs are more desirable or less desirable, let's dive into how to breed your crested geckos. Shown previously is an example of a breeding enclosure for two to three adult crested geckos. You can pair one male to one to three females in an enclosure per season although it is quite beneficial to only pair one male gecko to one female gecko in order to know for sure who the parents of the offspring are. Crested gecko breeding can be relatively rough, not unlike most gecko species. During courtship, the male will mount the female while grabbing onto her crest and will make a few chirping noises. In the enclosure, provide a lay box present at all times for the female to investigate and dig into. This is where she'll lay the eggs. A lay box can be as simple as a box with a lid cut open so the gecko can climb in. For substrate, use moist cocoa fiber or sphagnum moss for the female to bury into and lay her eggs. This keeps the eggs from drying out. If this is the female's first season, she may accidentally lay the eggs outside of the lay box for the first time. Remove the eggs carefully from the lay box in the exact same position they were in and place them in an incubation medium. You can use vermiculite or perlite. In addition, other reptile companies have specific incubation medium that you can also use. The medium should be moist with some very small holes for ventilation. Crested gecko eggs take between 60 to 90 days to hatch. Cooler temperatures result in longer incubation times, but will yield bigger and stronger offspring. Unlike with other geckos, crested geckos have no definitive way to determine sex based on temperatures that the eggs are incubated at. However, there has been a noted correlation for geckos incubated at higher temperatures becoming males and geckos incubated at lower temperatures becoming females. You can check to see if an egg is fertile or not by shining a flashlight against the surface of the egg. Fertile eggs will have a visible red embryo around the egg in the center. When an egg is freshly hatched, you should look for a red ring around the top of the egg. When a crested gecko is close to hatching time, it, you will actually be able to see the fully formed body of the crested gecko. An infertile egg is generally characterized by a slightly yellow appearance and a squishy, soft texture to the outer shell. Under the flashlight, it will have no red markings or hues within the egg. This is an indicator that the egg is infertile and contains no life. If you are unsure whether an egg is fertile or not, even after doing a flashlight test, you can still incubate infertile eggs. Just be sure to watch for mold or incubate them separately. If all goes well, your crested gecko will hatch in about two to three months. Offer food two days after hatching. 
Pair your geckos around the cooler months of winter in order to acclimate them to one another. They will then start breeding once the temperatures warm up. Congratulations! You now know the basics on how to take care of a crested gecko in all different types of enclosures and how to breed them.